Yo, what is up, YouTube, man? Pro 2 is my favorite post fade. I made a video talking about why I think it's the best in the game, but a lot of people disagree, and they think that the Kobe Bryant post fade is better. It's a little bit slower, but the thing about the Kobe Bryant post fade is it can hit more contested fades. You can hit a lot of yellows with this, and when you pair the Kobe Bryant post fade with post fade Phenom Hall of Fame, not to mention Dream Shake Hall of Fame, those badges will stack if you do a Dream Shake. It gets pretty unguardable. I'm gonna be showing you guys today me on my six foot nine build, going to the 1v1 and shooting some Kobe Bryant post fades. This is not the meta anymore. There was a time, you know, 2K19, where post fades were really dominant in the game. If you went to the 1v1 court, would run into somebody using post hop shots, post fades. Now it's more about the post hooks, more about jab stepping and getting standing meter dunks. But a lot of people sleep on this type of playstyle. As you guys can see, going up against a mascot, he's a pretty good offensive build. He's lacking some defense though, and right off the rip, go to the post, hit him with the fade. He tries to get a hand up late. That is wide open. It is unguardable. This guy though, he's cooking. He's getting some three-pointers. I think I'm there. It ends up staying wide open. There's a couple of other instances though where he is going to think he's wide open and I'm able to get a yellow contest. Speaking of that, he leaves me open for three. My build is called a two-way inside the arc score and I will say that name definitely gets me a lot of open threes. People don't think a two-way inside the arc score can hit threes but 76 three-pointer, it's all you need. Check it out right here to dream shake once again he doesn't jump he tries to get a hand up late it gives him a little bit of an open but that's post fade phenom and hall of fame dream stake both stacking i'm not gonna miss that shot check this out hitting him with some dream shakes fading to the opposite shoulder to get another wide open post fade and i got the 87 mid-range shot on this build that is the post fade rating to go along with the boost you know the badge is helping me out the hot spots helping me out Comp players would definitely see a video like this and think that they're going to box it, but it's tougher than it looks. You can see I got him crabbed a little bit right here. Once again, open man. He ends up, you know, just letting me take a shot. He shoots, he misses, he stops playing. He doesn't want to face the embarrassment of playing defense and looking like he's getting dropped off. So right here to shimmy once again. He's got to, and I hit a yellow contested like I said, man. When it comes to post fades hitting yellow contests, I think Kobe Bryant is one of the best ones in the game. I would still prefer Pro 2 because it gets me a little bit more space. Check this out too. I'm getting him to bite on the little Dream Shake pump fakes and it just gives me a free two to end the game right there. 8 to 21. Going into the next one as you guys can see. I do not miss a shot. I was playing my game. At no point did I feel like he was putting me in a position to take a shot I did not want to take. And right here, man, this is where this play style is at its best. I'm going up against a six foot three guard. He's not going to be able to contest it. And he's worried about me bullying him. You know, I'm actually not on a center for this video. You guys may expect me to be on my six foot 11 or my seven two, but I pulled out the six foot nine just because, you know, Kobe Bryant, he was a bit smaller. It's a lot more, you know, Kobe S to be using a guard type build. Once again, going to the dream shake, the shimmy, stealing the ball from him. I got the defense. I'm able to just yam on him immediately. He gets cold off of it, but I will say, you're going to see, he gets me back with a dunk of his own right there. Going to take my jump shot. I can get my takeover built up by doing these post fades. I can get, you know, my green machine rolling as well. Like I said, you know, he gets me back. He gets a dunk right there. He was not a bad player. It's just... Even if you have defense, it's going to be tough to stop. I pop finishing takeover. I got the close shot on this build as well. Hit him with a nice post hook going a bit of the opposite shoulder. Just so if he does jump, it's going to be tough for him to get out there being a smaller build. Now, if you're a tall build, if you got good defense, it's definitely easier to get a contest. If you're a smaller build, if you're going to be playing at, you know, a disadvantage on defense, maybe you upgraded more offense, you do got to be a bit more of a predictor on defense. You got to know what they want. You got to try to take that away. You can't just be reacting to everything they do right here. Like I said, man, post spin, get them crabbed, go for the post fade. No reason to do it. I had the free dunk, but why not let another Kobe Bryant post fade fly? Once again, as you guys can see, I do not miss a shot 100% from the field. Really just playing some efficient basketball, you know, some beautiful basketball to watch. A lot of people like the contested yellows going in. Me personally, and you can see right here, he's playing low. That two-way inside the arc score build name makes him think I need to shoot. I got to show him. And I'm not even going to take the three. I'm actually going to start with the post fade now. Obviously, I definitely could have hit the three pretty easily, but... 
We're trying to take as many post fades as we possibly can. Now, right here, I go for a dream shake. He contests it. I do mistime the shot, and I miss it. So even though the first two games, I was showing just perfect gameplay, this isn't a broken animation. I don't want anybody patching this, you know, anyone that works at 2K watching it. It's not an overpowered, broken thing. It's more about, you know, just reading your defender. As you guys can see, a lot of the time, I'm switching shoulders. I'm doing dream shakes, trying to get the stunts. I see him kind of drop just a little bit too low right here, so I post fade to the opposite shoulder. I knew that was going to be a good shot. Even though he kind of recovers pretty well, you can see the dead eye popping up, the post fade phenom popping up. It's going to be tough to miss that shot if I've got the timing down, and I've absolutely got the timing down. Now, obviously, on this build, I got a lot of different ways to score. So this video, and you can see, man, I break him with the dream shake right there. I made it short talking about that, and somebody was confused on what was going on. If you keep doing the fake dream shake shoulder shimmies, you can get a lot of ankle breakers and you can get some crazy ones. There's ones where they start doing the airplane. Honestly, the dream shake breaks this year might be better than the actual ankle breakers they got in the game, which is a problem. They definitely need to work on the ankle breakers a bit more. Check this out. Trying to see if I can stun him, get him crabbed, go up with the post of this, you know, trying to keep him on his toes, trying to make sure he's not going to predict what I'm going to do right there. Just do the little Paul George walk up and then hit it with a step back for the easy midi. I thought this was a pretty interesting gameplay right here. I'm going up against somebody who has high strength and he's got high layups. So he's going to be trying to get those bulldozer animations was my prediction. He's more of a floater guy though. Starting the game off, hitting the green floater. That meter I'm sure is ginormous and he's got some strength on defense. So it might be a bit tougher to actually back him down to get myself in the position I want to get to. I don't have high strength on this build, but the high post control with the bag down punisher is really all you need as long as you're not going up against you know a super high 90 strength big right there stop get to the spot i want to get to go up with the shot he's hitting his spins he's going up with his floaters i'm honestly not doing a good job of taking that away this is you know something you're not going to see too often somebody that likes the layups compared to somebody that likes the post fades in right here i like my contact dunks with this build as well i yam it on him once again contact dunk on his head if somebody's worried about you dunking on him, that kind of opens up those where you see I kind of run toward the hoop, I stop, I go to the post, and then I do a quick fade right here. Shot clock running low. He should not have backed up. Maybe those dunks had him a bit scared. I was going to try to go for a dunk last second. He gives it up. I pluck him right here. Stop in the paint. He's reaching. I'm kind of seeing if he will lean to the right or left. I hit him with the shimmy. Now, in that situation, it's a red. You're not going to hit those no matter how broken the Dream Shake badge, how broken the post fade badge you think is right here. Little side to side for the open three-pointer. For the most part, though, I can keep somebody on their toes to where they're never going to get that good of a contest. Right there, I kind of just wanted to troll. I wanted to get a red. I wanted to green it because it is possible to hit that shot, but it's never going to be, you know, a super high rate right there. Open once again, stop at the midi, hit him with a quick shimmy into the open post fade mid range shot once again. Three pointer right here. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see any more videos talking about other post fade animations, and this is Tonic Man. I will catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.